Hello, my name is Amber, and today we will be exploring America's oldest city. Welcome to St. Augustine. St. Augustine is the oldest continuously occupied city in the United States. The city itself was founded in 1565, but Florida, the state that it's in, was founded in 1513 by Ponce de Leon, who named the state after the Easter season. Now, there were many failed attempts at trying to secure Florida for the Spanish crown. Most of the explorers had to go home, with Ponce de Leon himself being wounded and others getting sick or dying in the state. It wasn't until French settlements appeared in the area that the Spanish crown decided that they needed to secure Florida for themselves. The first stop is gonna be the St. Augustine Lighthouse. The earliest depiction of this lighthouse was in 1589. It was depicted on a map made by an Italian cartographer. From 1731 to 1762, the Spanish slowly replaced their lighthouse with one made of coquina, which is shells and wood. In 1763, the French and Indian Wars, or the Seven Years' War, ended, and Great Britain was given Florida. And in 1871, the Spanish lighthouse that was in place was slowly falling into the ocean, and it was evident that a new lighthouse would need to be created. In 1874, the lighthouse, this lighthouse here, was finished. This lighthouse features about 219 steps, and at the top you can see the whole city. This lighthouse is known for more than just its beautiful colors and its tremendous amount of steps. There are actually several spooky stories that come along with this structure. During the construction of this lighthouse, construction superintendent Hezekiah Petit was met with personal tragedy. His three children and an unnamed African-American girl <laughs> were playing with some of the carts used to take materials from the docks to this construction site. Unfortunately for them, they got into the cart, sped off like usual, and ended up in the sea. The car ended up flipping into the water, pinning the girls under, and unfortunately, two of Petit's daughters perished, as well as the African-American girl. Workers at the lighthouse have reported an apparition of a little girl. Several <laughs> guests have reported having their shoelaces tied to the stairs as they try to climb up the lighthouse. The spirits of Peter Rasmussen and Joseph Andre are also said to haunt this lighthouse. Now these two men were once keepers of the old original lighthouse that fell into the sea. Staff members have described smelling cigar smoke, which is characteristic of Peter Rasmussen, who loved to smoke cigars in his free time. As for Joseph Andrew, he accidentally fell off of the lighthouse when painting one day, and staff members say that you could see his spirit at the top of a lighthouse from time to time. Next stop is Flagler College. In the late 1800s, hotel accommodations in St. Augustine were among the worst in the country. It was so bad that the city actually put notices out to have people come down and build hotels like this one right behind me. Henry Flagler, a man who had made money in the oil business, came down to St. Augustine to build a hotel. That hotel would later be called Ponce de Leon Hotel. In 1888, the Ponce de Leon Hotel opened, and it was considered an architectural marvel for its time. This hotel had many notable guests, like JFK and Grover Cleveland. In World War II, the hotel was transformed into a training base for the Coast Guard. And then in 1968, it was finally turned into Flagler College, which it stands as today. Henry Flagler ordered before his death that all of his buildings keep their doors and windows open upon his death so that his spirit may be able to come and go at will. On the day of his funeral, all the doors and windows of the Ponce de Leon Hotel were open. However, a janitor decided that they should probably be closed. Unfortunately, many say that Henry Flagler's ghost has been trapped in the hotel and now the college ever since. Flagler's second wife, Ida Flagler, is rumored to be a spirit at this college as well. Her ghost is said to haunt the inside of this building and she could be seen staring at the picture of Flagler. One of Henry Flagler's mistresses is rumored to haunt the building as well. Tragically, she committed suicide and now it is rumored that she haunts the students that come to college here. We are making our way to the Spanish Military Hospital. We're standing next to an exact replica of a building that would have been here from the 1700s to the early 1800s. Thousands of bones were actually discovered under this building. The bones are believed to belong to a native tribe called Timokuin. 
There were two very important rooms inside of the original building, the ward and the morning room. People that went to the ward were sick. People that went to the morning room were sick and would never recover. Many people describe feeling a very evil presence here, and there's also been a lot of reports of screaming, crying, and even giggling. There have sometimes been sightings of patients still in their hospital gowns. We are now heading to the fort of the Castillo de San Marcos. In 1668, the Spanish fort that stood here was in ruins, and in 1672, they completed this fort that you see behind me. Now this fort is made out of coquina, which is fire resistant, same as the lighthouse we saw earlier. It is one of only two forts in the world built with this material. This is also the oldest structure in St. Augustine, and it was used to fight against pirates. The British attacked this fort several times in the 1800s, but they were never able to take it. In terms of spookiness, this fort stands out in St. Augustine's history. There have been many reports of apparitions here, including soldiers that walk along the walls day and night. Dungeons seem to be a hot spot, and at sunset or sunrise, people say that you can see the soldiers still manning their posts. Many people report smelling perfume, and people say that can be attributed to one of the ghosts here. One of the most famous ghosts here is the wife of a colonel who was cheating on him with his assistant, and apparently you can smell her perfume inside of these walls today. The last stop is going to be the old jail. We're standing here at the old jail in St. Augustine, which was created by Henry Flagler to protect his patrons at his new hotel, the Ponce de Leon. It was a male and female prison, and it was meant to look very inviting from the outside. That's why it features Romanesque architectural styles. Although it looked inviting on the outside, it was very rough on the inside. Inhumane prison conditions were common here. It was opened in 1891, and it closed in the 1950s. There is also a gallows on the property. This location is known for its gruesome and dark history, and that shows in the counts and stories from visitors and workers here. Visitors say they hear the sounds of chains rubbing together, footsteps, screams, yells. One of the women's cells is known for having a lot of activity where people are pushed constantly. Thank you for coming along today, and check out our social media for more content.